It's the 6th of October and I thought I'd do a quick progress update of where we are in the cutting patch. As you can imagine, it's the end of the season, so it's all about doing a final clear up, making the beds ready for next season. Um, whilst prolonging what we can of this season, um, but I'm not taking too long about it. So I have done really well this week. We have had miserable weather for, oh, since July really. Um, and now it's in October, we are just having a final flush of summer. We've got some nice warm weather predicted. So I intend to make great use of it and get out and do the final clear up as much as I can whilst maintaining as many flowers as I can so that when it when that finishes in about three days time I don't need to worry about the garden too much after that until next spring. So I plan for a busy few days so I thought I'd take you along for the ride. I'm Nicola, I'm a home gardener in Shropshire and I like to create a cutting garden that as, is as productive and cost efficient as possible and that means for me not working in the cold and wet so having these few days now is perfect to get me finishing off the beds for winter and ready for next spring so let me show you what I've done already so I've cleared out these two beds here might not be obvious that there's two beds, but there is a path kind of running up the middle there. And um, these beds, this bed here was full of uh, straw flowers, scabiosas, and a few bits and bobs, and um, I think some limonium. Um, but that's all come out, and I've now planted it up with lots of biennials. So, Yes, first bed done. <laughs> Dahlias, I will probably start thinking about lifting them towards the end of October if we don't have frost before then. I like to give them a good rest over the winter um, so I don't wait until the last minute because then it becomes difficult to dry them and get them stored. So I like to do it when it's convenient to me <laughs> rather than the other way around. This next bed has got tulips underneath it actually. So all I need to do is pull everything out once it's finished. This bed was the old biennial bed. So we've had in here pretty much all sweet rocket and sweet williams. Um, so I plan to lift what is salvageable in this bed and disperse it throughout the rest of my garden, not in the cutting patch, because I've realized that whilst the cutting patch looked glorious, or the main garden didn't have that much flower. So I'm gonna take inspiration from the cutting patch and sprinkle the main garden with some of the flowers I'm sowing in the cutting patch. So these honesty, sweet rocket, sweet William, and wallflowers will be going into the main garden. So a lot to clear up here and move about. So I've got a further three beds to clear out in summary um, and that's where I'll be doing over the next few days. So come along with me as I sort it all out and hopefully by the time the weather changes again I can relax. Oh my goodness, you know when you start something and wish you hadn't? It's taken me a day and a half to clear space in my current garden, in the existing garden, so that I could plant out these plants. And I'm just looking now, I thought I only had three honesties, and it looks like I've got five, so I don't even know whether I've cleared enough space for that. But we can go with that, that's fine. Um, so now I just need to 
dig them all up and start moving. Otherwise, I'm going to be losing the weather and I really want to um, get this all hoed down and the remaining hardy annuals in the ground before the weather breaks. So let's crack on. Okay, that's enough for one day. I have removed all of the plants, planted them elsewhere if I wanted them or disposed of them in the compost heap. I have hoed down the top to get rid of the small weeds and I am now going to leave those weeds to shrivel up in the sunshine and hopefully give me a chance tomorrow to rake it over, to level it out, put some weed membra membrane down and then plant out the annuals. And that's one pen done. Phew. So here we are, back refreshed to get on with my flower bed that I was sorting out yesterday. And since then, this morning, I have also raked the, raked it down so it's level. I've sprinkled on some weed castings, weed, worm castings, um, because I had some available. And I have put down a layer of weed membrane. Um, and the weed membrane is obviously there to help with the weeds. And I wouldn't normally want to be using it. I'm quite happy in the rest of the garden to be having the compost displayed. However, my compost from the, my, my homemade compost seems to be rife with weed seedlings and it just gets a bit too much when you're having to constantly get rid of them. Now, it's easier to do it in a garden, in a cutting patch like this, but nevertheless, I want to be efficient. Um, I don't want to be digging up weed seedlings. And so I'm hoping that the, the weed membrane will help twofold. First of all, suppress the weeds. And by having it down for a couple of seasons, it might mean that there is less weeds going into the compost bins and therefore we'll, I'll get into a better cycle with those compost bins. Fingers crossed. Second one is that whenever there is bare soil, my cat makes a beeline for it and uses it as a toilet. And there's nothing more <laughs> alarming to discover when you're digging that the cat's just been in the toilet there and you're digging in amongst a load of cat poo. Not pleasant. Or the dogs find it first and eat it, which again, equally unpleasant. So in order to prevent that, the weed membrane really helps. Now I have put in a, I have a video from earlier in the season where I, I was experimenting with different types of approaches to try to suppress the weeds. Um, and I use straw in one, nothing another, and obviously weed membrane. And hands down, the weed membrane worked wholeheartedly. The straw did suppress the weeds better than um, nothing. However, it really did um, it really did encourage slugs and, and and that seemed to be the worst bed for it. Admittedly, it was the dahlias and slugs like dahlias, so it could have just been um, the two things together made for disaster. I could have maybe tried the straw on a different bed and I wouldn't have had the same impact. However, I did. So, and I, I've used straw before and I do know it does work really well as a weed suppressant, um, but the slugs were just too much. So. I'm using the weed membrane. Until something better comes along and then, or until I can get the compost under control, that is what I'm gonna do. So I have laid it out and I am gonna be planting into this some snapdragons or antirhinums and some larkspur. Um, but I know those plants need to be a certain um, distance apart, which is about 22 centimeters, so I can get four plants in rows in um, in this bed. Again, in a previous video, I showed 
my, me, my first effort at using the weed membrane and I was a bit scared of using a blowtorch so I used scissors to create the holes and that was an absolute pain which really did put me off the weed membrane until I saw the results of the weed test um, in which case I thought I need to do something more so I have got a blowtorch um, which will create the holes for me and it does that by creating the plastic and so that equally helps because it's melting the plastic it forms a melted edge which kind of binds all of the plastic layers together so that it stops the fraying which is a problem I had with the cutting approach that I had so I've tried it before it's not as dangerous as it seems if I can do it anybody can I did it previously with the scissors because I was too scared to use this however I can't it do it using the scissors just took forever and it was a real pain tried this and it is so quick and easy so this is what I'll be using they will not be perfect the holes will not be perfect they won't be perfectly spaced but I know what I need to do in the roughly the positions it needs to be and that will be good enough for me um, I have seen videos where people have templates to create the holes you're not going to find that here it is just literally move the gun to the positions I want and it will create the holes um, so maybe a bit random and a bit hit and miss and if you're into perfect then it, I'm not doing that but it's quick and easy so let's get on and it's as easy as that 64 holes done in a minute <laughs> so compared to a whole afternoon that I took um, previously blowtorch is definitely the way to go now we're just ready for some planting so we've got the snapdragons and um, I've got a few different varieties there has loads that have germinated which is always the way with snapdragons because they're such tiny seeds it's really difficult to separate them out I have also got larkspur but I've only got eight germinated seeds so I will plant those out but I will also um, plant out seeds within the holes and hope for some germ germination so I'll put a few seeds and just hope that one of them will germinate in that lot and then we'll just leave it over winter that is larkspur is a seed that supposedly likes stratification which is cold um, so leaving it over winter should be perfect it should give it perfect conditions maybe that's the way to go for me because trying to do it within a seed tray just doesn't seem to work for me or not in any great number so this is going to be an experiment for the larkspur this year so I have planted everything in um, there wasn't many larkspur in the end possibly more weeds than larkspur in the seed tray um, so I have sprinkled some seeds into the holes so fingers crossed something comes of those and um, if not then start again in spring and um, the same with the snapdragons whilst there was plenty of seedlings once I started trying to plant them they really were tiny and I know snapdragons are tiny for such a long time and seem to respond well to moving them on but I'm just again fingers crossed that they survive if they don't we'll start again in the, the spring again but as it ha as it stands now everything is planted and so now we can just move on to slowly clearing out the beds and that will be it not much effort actually left to get ready for winter I have cleared out this bed next to the dahlias um, pretty much fully there is one mallop left which seems to be flowering well I'll take a few more stems off it and then it can come out there's only one plant and there are two cosmos plants at the end that again 
I have thinned out and um, will hopefully continue to flower for a li little bit longer so it's something else to pick from while until the late frosts so I will keep those in I've weeded as underneath as much as I can and then I have just laid on this weed membrane and um, I am not going to be fixing it in place because I have actually got tulips underneath this already so they are last year's tu tulips and I am interested to see how they perform in the second year um, they were brilliant this year and all flower farmers seem to lift all of their bulbs and discard them and that to me seems really quite wasteful and it costs a fortune on tulips so I have um, kept them in and we'll see how they go if they are no good then I haven't lost anything if they're okay then that's brilliant it may be that I move them out into the garden for next year or subsequent years or into pots who knows but at the moment they're in so I need to be able to lift up this membrane come I don't know December time I might keep having a peek to see when the tips are emerging and as soon as the tulips start emerging then I need to lift it all but what I do want to do I want to minimize how much weed growth there is between now and whenever this weed, weed membrane gets lifted so there's minimal work next year so I'm actually really quite pleased with what I've done so far and um, what's left to do later on certainly not this week is to lift the dahlias as we've said get rid of these last annuals cosmos and malob and there are some annuals there that need to be knitted they're already in weed membrane so it should just be a matter of pulling up the plants and that's it done so so I've done everything that was essential and now anything else that I do is a bonus hopefully you've got some good weather where you are and you're able to get on with tidying up and finishing off the season's growth so that you can sit down and relax over winter let me know if there's anything that you do as a final step to make your lives easier in the garden for over winter or into the spring until next time happy gardening